Congress is back at work in Washington starting tomorrow, and last week we saw former Vice President Joe Biden add his name to the very long list of candidates for the Democratic presidential nomination. So we have special correspondent Jeff Greenfield to join us for some political analysis and perspective. Good to have you at the table. At the uh, table. Indeed. First, uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the Biden factor. This is something that has been almost a foregone conclusion. It's been such a long windup. Here he is, but really he spends the first few days of his official part of the campaign dealing with his past and his legacy and the Anita Hill, uh, you know, mm -hmm. hearings. For me, the thing that I think we ought to highlight is the money th issue. We in the political world judge a candidate often by how his or her fundraising is going, right? right. So Joe Biden threw down $6.3 million in one day, and that was a sign, oh, maybe he's serious about this. And when you see a candidate like uh, Senator Gillibrand struggle to reach 65,000, which is the benchmark to get into the debates, you, you have this notion that even though we think money is, shouldn't be that big a factor, it's a major issue in judging a presidential candidate. Mm. And is there a concern over the long term that you know, if money is a proxy of the amount of support you have, that basically these smaller donors could become a bigger factor? Absolutely. I mean, one of the factors about Joe Biden is not having had a donor list. So he, if he is raising his money at the outset from big money people who are giving the maximum amount, that's it. He can't go back to them. Bernie Sanders supporters, 95 percent of whom have given under two hundred dollars, they're, they're a, a, a sustainable resource. They can kick in money again and down the road. That could be a real factor when the campaign actually gets going. You know, I, in the lead up, I said Congress getting back to work and it almost feels like an oxymoron at the moment. How <laughs> much work are they going to be able to get done when they are now, especially when it comes to these committees who are saying, hey, I want you to testify in front of me. I want you to testify in front of me. You said this in the Mueller report. I want this out in the open. The Trump administration says, nah, no thanks. I mean, we've always had tension when a president of one party faces a Congress or partially controlled by the other party. But we've never had an administration that has said sort of flat out, no, nobody involved in the, in the report is going to testify. What are you going to do about it? And so what I think is happening is that the, that the very um, audacity, if you will, of saying flat out nobody is a way of saying to the Congress, you don't really have the power to do anything about this and we'll just drag this out till the next election. Speaking of uh, turmoil, internal or otherwise, the NRA had a not a great week this week. Oliver North, who was the president, was basically forced out. Um, how significant is this, I mean, for such an influential organization? Uh, even though their membership is declining, even though they've faced issues about money, they've never had a president as uncritically supportive of the NRA as Donald Trump, who just went before them and told them that he's getting out of this international mm -hmm. arms deal because they, they don't like it. But on the other hand, this is a kind of impl a public implosion of a major organization, the likes of which we've never seen. And I do have to say, for people who do not like the NRA in the first place, this is like um, Christmas and the Super Bowl. And le most important, I think, the New York Attorney General, this is New York is where the NRA is chartered, is threatening to take away their tax exemption because of what they've done. And that could be a really serious blow to, a, as you point out, a very powerful lobbying group. Finally, you know, it's that economic numbers do matter in the political context. Uh, president's public perception of their actions also follows. Right. Here's the, the, the quirk. Trump's numbers at this point are lower than any president since World War II, despite the great economy, which tells you that people, even in a good economy, are still hesitant, if not negative, about mm. his performance in office. Should these numbers prove illusory? like the sugar rush from a tax cut, then you can actually say this president is, is in real trouble uh, next year. Because as James Carville and, uh, told us back in 1992, the economy is stupid. It's still not a bad way to judge how a presidential campaign is going to go. All right. Jeff Greenfield, thanks so much.